So, Ben, you're a pitcher at St. Thomas University. You're here in the Cape League, the most premier rec and recognized league in the world. What's your experience been like so far? Uh, it's been really great. Uh, I've been here a week, uh, really gelling with the team. Uh, I've had three outings, two pretty decent, one not so decent, mm -hmm. but uh, got the bad outing out of the way, and uh, we're on a two-game two win streak, and it feels good. It feels good to be winning. So we kind of today just wanted to talk a little bit about your story, basically. And so when you were born, there were some complications to your best understanding and knowledge. Can you describe them and then what doctors did to fix them? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, my, my condition was either a heart or lung deficiency, um, a little bit premature. And uh, they put me on the extracorporeal membrane oxygenization system. It's short for ECMO. Um, it's super successful now. At the time, it was experimental. And the doctors at Hershey Medical Center in Hershey, Pennsylvania, uh, it was Dr. Dillon, uh, saved my life. Uh, they just told my parents, pretty much, I'm an experiment. He was born by emergency C-section and immediately had problems. Ben and Chef's story begins right at his birth in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. He suffered from a heart and lung deficiency. In other words, his organs were underdeveloped. It was a diagnosis that was experimental back in 1992. The experiment connected Ben to a heart and lung machine that pumped oxygen into his blood, hoping to make his organs strong again. The surgeon came in and talked to us and he said, we don't have it down, we don't know if it will work, we think it could work for him, so you need to decide if you want us to try this for him or you have about two hours to spend. It was a waiting game then for several weeks. Thanks to the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, Ben was able to go home just a month later. Fortunately, he was uh, their first major success at Hershey Med. I had asthma at the, at the beginning, and I was on super close watch with the doctors. My my doctor's folder is probably a, a whole foot. Yeah. It looks crazy <laughs> when I go into the doctor's office and look like I'm 80 years old. But uh, <laughs> Have you ever been back to the hospital? Yes, yeah, I go for all like my routine checkups, really? uh, everything there, yeah. Ben's mother would call him charmed. He was actually baptized twice, something unheard of in the Catholic religion. He was baptized and given his last rites when his life was in jeopardy, and he was baptized in ceremonial fashion once he was released from the hospital. Ben's childhood can be a testament to the kind of person he has become. Always a sporting family, his parents have followed him and his brother's journeys through sports and competitions in Williamsport and Pennsylvania, where Ben was beginning to make a name for himself. Small town Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> I played baseball ever since I can remember. Probably four years old I started. Um, I played my whole life. I didn't start pitching until high school, but I uh, played baseball my whole life and always had a strong passion for it and really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite sports. So. When did you notice he was really good at baseball and had something special? Um, he's been fortunate. The teams that he's been on have always seemed to do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, they had good coaching and he, he just always had a lot of success. The drive is what I noticed in him. If I was playing a game of kickball against third graders, I, I just, <laughs> I'll go all out. Competitive. Uh, yeah, just super competitive. Yeah. And I think that keeps me grounded just to try to do anything I can to win. So now, so many years later, you kind of became an internet sensation. Over a thousand followers on Twitter, you know, a fan page, and there's stories out there about you basically everywhere. Do you kind of feel like there's a spotlight on you in any way? Um, a little bit, a little bit of a spotlight. I think it faded off a little bit, which is actually pretty nice. It was yeah. a little hectic there at the beginning. The phone was ringing off the hook and text messages and people wanting to do interviews and wow. radio stations, this and that. Uh, Really uh, humbling, I soaked it all in and it was a great experience, but probably still a little bit of a spotlight on me, uh, just being that I'm so big and don't fit the prototypical mold of a baseball player, look more like a football player on the mound. Now Ben, with his atypical body frame, has attracted the attention of the internet and media from around the nation. Most headlines regarding the right-handed pitcher pay regards to his size before his talent. For Ben, though, the name of the game has always been baseball. Uh, sometimes the other team heckles you for a little bit, and then once they see I can actually pitch, they, they kind of just knock it off. So That's good. Yeah. It can be one thing to have a spotlight on you as a player, 
but something entirely different to go through it as a mother. All of the media attention that he's gotten, what's that been like for you as his mom? Well, there was some of it, especially the negativity. That was hard for me to read a lot of the comments, things people said were hurtful. You can see how humble Ben is just by watching him pitch and not even knowing his story. I always try to give 110%, uh, be a great competitor, um, just try to help my team win in any way. I don't really think about it as, oh, I'm pitching, I'm on the mound, it's all on me. I think of how can I help my team win. Yeah. Just took it all in stride and it was like, okay, it's yeah. whatever. I'm a little bit of a journeyman. Ben took his schooling in stride as well. His path didn't get any easier once college hit. He attended four schools in four years, first at Division I University of Georgia. He wasn't happy with his playing time, so decided to go to a junior college, State College of Florida and Brett and Tendon. He found a lot of success there going 11-3, leading the nation's junior colleges in wins. After leaving the Manatees, though, and graduating junior college, Ben went back to Division I at Central Arkansas. With two saves and a 0.00 ERA in his first three appearances, he then suffered a Tommy John elbow surgery, which paused his baseball career. After the injury, Ben decided to venture elsewhere, finding himself where he is now, pitching for the University of St. Thomas. According to the Miami Herald, St. Thomas coach Jorge Perez said Ben had 40 scholarships coming out of junior college. If it wasn't for the injury, St. Thomas would have never even had the chance to get him. It was a great fit. We had a really good season this year. Uh, national runner-up, and I really like it. There will be, be going back there in August. So. so you're at a school you love. You're here in the Cape for the summer. Are you happy with where you are right now in life? Well, yeah, like, yeah, super happy. happy. Super happy. The last, uh, last six months have been really great. Um, from coming, working at AT&T a year ago from the day, rehabbing from Tommy John, where a lot of people counted me out, to be playing in the most prestigious league in the country and, and uh, have another year to go yet, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. How proud are you of his accomplishments and what he's gone through? It's just amazing. He, it's just when I think, okay, I, you know, he's done so much and he's experienced so much. And okay, well, you know, he's at school now and can anything more come of this? And it's just, there's so, he seems to be something new. He's been able to conquer so much. His mom kept saying of her son, Ben. He was a fighter right from the start of his life and he's continued that persona as he's grown up. He's fighting for more than just himself. And this time around, instead of a hospital, Ben Anchef is fighting on a mound.